Hi, I'm Modulated Music. I normally play on modular systems, but today I want to talk about the Tintin Black Box. I got this a couple months ago. It's a cool little sampler. It's really portable. It's a great everyday carry type device. It pairs really, really well with the Launch Key Mini Mark III. As I've got it run here, I just have a USB out of here into the USB port on the back of the black box. What's really cool about the black box is the multi-sampling. They just updated the firmware a few weeks ago with version 1.6 and then released version 1.65, which I believe just fixes bugs. But the most important thing about version 1.6 is the multi-sampling, the auto-sampling. In the past, you could do multi-sampling, but it was a single velocity layer, meaning you couldn't get any velocity range. And you had to manually create all your multi-samples, which was kind of a pain. So now what they've done is they've released a way, or in the firmware, there's released a way to auto-sample all the notes from a MIDI instrument. The black box will actually drive all the note data, velocity data, and then it will record each piece in, and then it will piece that all together into a multi-sample that you can play like an instrument. Now, you can do this with any kind of instrument that supports MIDI, but I'm going to be using my little modular system here. I normally play on a much bigger system. I typically do improvisational uh, music, but, to, but today I'm just going to create a multi-sample, and I thought the rings would be a really, really good candidate for this feature because you can get some really cool sounds out of it. I'm going to be creating a bass patch, but you can make all kinds of different patches for this. So the first thing you want to do when you make a new sample on here, well, like I, I like to do, I would don't say you have to do it, but I like to make a little program set, piece set, for whatever I'm sampling. So I'm going to name this Rings Modular. And if you want to make a new one, you just hit File, New, and you can name it. But I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm going to go over the pads. As you can see, all of my pads are empty. You're going to go touch a pad. It can be any pad, but we'll start here. And you're going to hit Info. And that's your sampling page. If you want to do a multi-sample, what you need to do is hit the 1x and change it to multi. The first thing you want to do is if you want to be able to preview what it sounds like with your keyboard is you need to hit info which goes to the pad made main page and you're going to go to MIDI and you're going to make sure that your MIDI is set to whatever your keyboard is set to. So my keyboard is channel 1. It's coming in via USB to the black box and the black box I have a MIDI cable here and that's going to be connected up to my modular. So I'm going to go back over here, we'll go to multi, and then at the bottom you're going to want to make sure your record monitor is set to on or auto. It's set to auto here, so I think we're good. So the next thing we need to do is put the patch together. So I take my MIDI cable, which is just plugged into here, I'm going to go into my Mutant Brain, which is, um, it is a MIDI to CV converter for modular URAC. And then I have my audio input on the back wired to this purple cable. The purple cable we're going to go ahead and run into the odd. Sorry about that. We're going to run into the odd there off the rings. I'm going to record this in mono. You can do this in stereo. There's, I mean, it's really limitless on how you do this. But I'm going to record it in mono um, because of the sample limitations and that kind of stuff. But I want the cleanest audio that I can get. So the next thing we need to do we need to take a couple more patch cables here and we're going to run each of these patch cables out from the mutant brain. Now the way I've got the mutant brain configured is it actually has four CVs up at the top, A, B, C, and D. My CVA output, I've already configured this to be MIDI channel 1 pitch. So we're going to go to the voltage per octave. The B is my velocity from my keyboard or from the black box. I'm going to use a green cable. I'm going to make that go over here to the brightness. I've already kind of tested this a little bit and this is pretty close to the sound that I want for the sample. And then down here under gates, my gate number one is actually wired up to my gate from MIDI channel one. So that's going to go in your strum. 
So now if you want to see if it's working, I've already set the MIDI channel in the black box and I can just play on the keyboard. And you can see as I play the notes, the gate will flash. It'll actually stay on as long as you hold the note. But the rings actually doesn't support a sustain stage for the gate. The strum is more of a trigger, meaning it'll receive the trigger and the decay is based on the damp. So if you want a really long note, you can turn the dampening up. If you want a really short plucky note, you turn it down. So I'm going to leave it about halfway. That's kind of where I want it. Now the mode that I've got rings in actually is a two operator FM. And I'm going to use it as a bass line. I like to use that as a bass in a lot of stuff. But it's got a bunch of different modes here. You've got your, um, it's like a physical modeling, uh, like a xylophone type. It's kind of like a xylophone, depending on where you set the structure. If you set it up here, it's, it's more like woody. I like to set the structure. Makes kind of a cool, like a bass tone. And then you got the, um, the yellow here. It's kind of like a dulcimer or something like that. And then you've got the red, which is like a plucked string. I think it's sympathetic strings or something like that. So to get into the two op FM mode, you actually have to change, go to the green and hold down the green. And what that'll do is it'll start flashing. Now you're in the two op FM mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset these settings. Set my damp up a little bit. You can see the velocity actually does make a difference. If I tap it lightly, it's nice and smooth. If I hit it harder, the brightness actually goes up and that gives it more of an aggressive like FM noise. If I turn this little knob here, the attenuator up, it gets even more aggressive, but I don't want to do that. I kind of like it right here, so it's nice and controllable. Let's turn it a little bit more. Just a little bit more than that. Okay, that way I get a nice smooth tone here. And it kind of goes a little bit crazy when you give it a little bit more velocity. And that's what I want, because I'm making a velocity layer sample. We'll go back over here on the black box and we can look at the settings for recording. Again, to make it multi-sample, you hit the little button here and you go to multi. You record input, I'm gonna make it left because on the rings up here, I'm coming out of odd, which is the left. It's gonna be a mono sample. I've already kind of adjusted the gain on here. If you scroll through these, um, you can turn the gain up, but with the modular running so hot into the black box, it actually starts clipping. So I turn the gain down so that we don't get any clipping in the sampler. Under file name, I've already named it. I've got 2 op FM velocity to bright. And if you want to change the name, you just press the info here and you can type it in. The start note is going to be the starting note that it starts sampling at. The ending note is going to be the ending note. I just want from C2 to C5. It's going to sample every second note. What that means is, if it was sampling every note, it would sample the white and the black keys. But I don't need that. I think every two notes, the whole notes, will be okay. I think that's all I really need. I want three velocity layers. So there's going to be a soft layer, a medium layer, and a hard layer, depending on how hard you press the keys. This is the MIDI channel that the black box is going to use to drive the instrument. It could be another synthesizer with MIDI, or it could be something like what I have, the Eurorack, going through a MIDI to CV. The note length is how long it's going to press and hold the note. In our case here with this sample, the rings will not actually support a sustain stage, so it doesn't matter how long the note length is, it's only ever going to be a short pluck that ring sees, and the decay is actually controlled with the dampening. The release length is how long it's going to hold that sample and continue recording before it goes to the next sample. You want to make sure that the release length is set long enough that you can get the entire sample. For example, if I turn the dampening up, you can see how this goes down very slowly. You want to make sure your release length is long enough for that to completely die away or you're going to get some weird overlapping in your samples. I think a four second overlap is all we really need here.
record monitor. Again, if you want to hear what you're actually recording, you would turn this to auto or on. If you don't care, you can leave it off. I think that's all the settings there. So to do the recording, what we need to do is we hit play and we hit record. As you can see, it's going. It's going to record 57 samples. I believe right now it currently supports up to 64 total. So depending on how many notes you're sampling and how many velocity layers you're actually sampling, it might go, um, you might go over that 64. And if you do, it actually won't load all the samples when you load this, the multi-sample instrument. So I wanted to keep it under 64, which is why I kept the range limited because I'm doing three velocity layers. So now we just sit here and wait. I'm going to probably edit this bit out so you don't have to watch it record every sample. All right, it looks like it's finished. So now, if you want to hear what it sounds like, and I'll prove that this is actually the black box making the noise, I'm going to disconnect the audio from the modular coming into the black box. I'm also going to disconnect the MIDI. So all we have hooked up here is the audio output, the MIDI keyboard, and this is the power. So now... Can play it from the keyboard. If I do like a softer touch, you can also play this from the little keyboard here. Obviously, this isn't velocity sensitive. I don't know if there's actually a way to change velocity that this keyboard is sending. So you can see it's actually named my multi-sample here on my screen. What's really cool about the multi-samples on the black box is this. If you go into the info, hit it again, you get your main pages. On your main page you can see it's playing as mono. What I can actually do is I can set that to poly. What's even cooler than that is you can apply like a filter to it. Let me see if I can reach over to the filter. And it's a two-way filter, so it's high pass one direction and low pass the other way. You can also apply an ADSR to this if you want. Right now my sustain is set to 100. I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to turn the attack up a little bit. Let's put the decay around 30%. See what that does. Let's turn the sustain completely off. Make a, kind of a plucky noise. So you've got a full ADSR here. And the other cool thing is under effects, you can actually apply effects to it. So effects one is going to be delay. It. This is going to be your reverb. You can do fixed chord mode on the watch key here. Or you can do an ARP. It sounds a little, a little goofy. <laughs> and the ARP actually responds to velocity, so if I do a soft ARP, It's going to be at the softer velocity here. So that's cool. I want to show you how you can actually load these. So what I'm going to do, this is a really cool thing too. It has actually saved that multi-sample into a folder within my project. If I want to load another one or reload that one, it's very easy. Let me hit clear here, and now you see I don't have any pads. I'm just going to go to a different pad, just so you know that I'm actually loading this. 
you hit info, go to load, and you can see that I have this, the red mode, velocity to brightness, and I have my 2 op FM, velocity to brightness. I've actually done this a couple times. What you do is you just select, this is like the main folder structure. You can see all my projects here. So what I want to do is I want to go into rings modular, hit load. You can see those are the different multi-samples I've made. Let's go ahead and load this plucky red mode velocity to brightness. So I just hit load, file, load all. It's actually going to make a multi-sample. So if I go back to my pads, let's go over here, let's go to MIDI, MIDI input, channel 1. If you want to make this not mono, you have to go into main, go in here, change it to poly. Again, let's add a little bit of delay and a little bit of reverb. That's why I like the multi samples. It's never going to be quite like playing on the original instrument or the original module, but it gives you some benefits that you can't get, such as making a polyphonic rings that I can play chords with. And this is why I think this is a killer feature on the 1010 Music black box that they've added. This is only a few killer features away from being almost an MPC killer, in my opinion. But I think it works great in my little studio, and it's awesome that I can load a bunch of multi samples on here on my SD card. Throw this in my backpack with the Launch Key Mini Mark III, and I have a nice portable rig that I can create tracks on. It has a full song mode, it has a full sequencer mode. On the pads, you can load in other samples that you have very easily just by pressing load, and I can find, if I go up, I can actually find, well, you get the point. <laughs> I can hit load, I can go it through here and I can just hit a lo I can load anything here and I can you can sequence these just like you can with something like an MPC you can resample them to another pad just like you can with something like an SP404 another really cool thing that I've actually done on my launch key mini mark 3 is if I go into the custom mode you can see I've color coded these rows on the pads the bottom row is going to be your blues so I can actually just tap so they correspond to the rows here. So the blue or the bottom row, the orange is going to be the second row, the red is going to be the third row, and the green is going to be the fourth row. And you can actually, these are velocity sensitive as well. So you could actually use these to play drums, um, which is really, really cool. So you could use it like an SP404. I think the Tencent Black Box is really, really cool sampler, and I think it could fit into pretty much any music maker's workflow. Again, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe. I might do some more tutorial videos. I do a lot of modular videos. I'm going to start doing some patch from scratch type videos, maybe some modular basics, and how I build my patches to do improvisational live music. Uh, mostly techno, but I also do some down-tempo stuff as well. All right, catch you next time.